my friends, I now invite you to enjoy this classic Dr. Groovy lesson. Hey folks, Scott Grove here. Uh, gonna give you a little more uh, stuff here on the slide, blues style stuff. Um, some more free lessons. Why? Because I'm in that giving spirit. I'm in that holiday spirit. What holiday is it? It's um, summer. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm not going to gripe at you all about which uh, finger to wear your slide on because it's futile. Um, Google it if you don't know the word. Okay. <laughs> um, anyway, you'll see where I prefer to wear mine if you don't wear yours there. Groovy. Okay, I'll let it pass for today. Um, I'm going to do very basic blue stuff, but this is um, stuff that counts and it's going to be based on shapes instead of scales and modes and so forth. So very basic, easy slide guitar um, help for those of you guys who uh, aren't getting it anywhere else. Help that is. Okay, so let's get right down here to the serious axe we're going to use today. Okay, we're going all the way back to 1991, I believe it was, the only year they made these things. 91, 92, I've got like five, six, seven of these. The Fender HMT, that's right, the Heavy Metal Telecaster. Um, just a quick description for anybody who's never seen such a thing. Yes, these are the Japanese made ones, 24 frets. Big Jackson style uh, fret markers. You got the single silver lace sensor single coil here. The DiMarzio. Um, this is called the Super Distortion or the SD3, which has a coil split right here to go from single coil to humbucker. Okay, and it's one of the truest sounding splits you can make. It's not a coil tap, it's a coil split, which means it goes from single coil. You know, humbucker to single coil. You've got a TBX tone control, which means TBX treble bass expander. Zero to five is a normal tone. Five to ten boost your uh, bass and treble. Leaves your mids where they were. Three-way switch. And a license by Floyd Rose Kaler. Kind of strange, huh? But it's the only Fender guitar in the world you'll find where the whammy will actually stay in tune. Okay. Okay, so we're still in tune. Okay, now what we're going to do today um, is break out the lovely big star of the show, the Casio. Oh, dig the quality. Hey. I know, but that's what we get to work with today because I'm not breaking out the tracks. So we're going to just jam along to that. Um, We'll play it in whatever keys we have to, but everybody's favorite, of course, is the key of G. So, um, remember, the most important thing about slide work is that um, you do not need to raise your action at all. You do not need heavier strings at all. And that's that. And also, you always need, no matter what finger you put your slide on, of course, I prefer to put mine on the middle finger, strictly so I can continue to go... <laughs> chords, you know, I'm kind of weird about that. I like to be able to play chords. And then still be able to play slide. Putting it anywhere else does not allow you to make for the chords, but you can play slide. Okay? Now this is all in standard tuning, so you do not need to detune. I've never found a need to actually detune for anything. But, so we are in standard tuning. Okay? So we're going to learn some cool, easy stuff, and but very effective stuff. Okay, of course we're going to be playing in the key of G to start with. Um, the other thing we have to remember for all you people playing for the first time, um, does it matter what material your slide bar is? Uh, yeah, basically for one reason. If it's um, not metal and it hits a hard floor, it's going to break. If it is, it won't even dent. So, if you're playing carpeted stages, use whatever material you want. If you're playing stages that are other than carpeted, whether they be wood, cement, tile, or otherwise, Bring a spare slide if you prefer to bring, be wearing, you know, a glass or a ceramic slide. Okay, so enough of that. Um, the first um, shape we're going to use is just going to be an A shape. So if you're playing an A chord with one finger, of course slide is done with one finger, so you would not want to 
familiarize yourself with that whole thing or associate it with it. So think of a one finger thing and where can we do it? We can do it open on uh, the D, G, and B strings. But not a lot of room to move around. We will come down there in just a second. Okay, so I'm going to take it all the way up to the 12th fret. I'm going to go to my neck pickup. Okay, now your last important ingredient here is your damping finger. Okay, if I was to not put a finger behind the slide, you would actually get... It's hard to hear it over distortion. So, let's not put it over distortion for a second. Let's put it over clean, just for fun. Hear those other different things? That's because we're at the 12th fret. Number one, it's a natural harmonic. So you're going to hear... Either way you go, you're hearing... that from behind it. So you have to put your finger back there to shut it up. No, do not push down with that. Do not push down with your slide. You just put your slide on the strings and apply no pressure. The weight of the slide is enough. Okay, that's why you do not need to raise your action at all, no matter who, who else tells you otherwise. I'm here to tell you otherwise also. Okay, if you're pushing on your slide to make things happen, you are playing it wrong. Okay, so... That's why I can have my strings right on the flippin' neck and have no problem. Does that sound like I'm having a single bit of problem with my strings, like a pick's width away from the neck? No. So, rumor debunked. Mythbusters, thank you. Okay. So what we're going to do here is go to the 12th fret, and when you play slide, you play it, no, not back here like you normally play. You play with the slide directly on top of the fret, okay? So you need to replace the fret, uh, basically. It's just like acting like your nut has moved up here. Um, when you get my age, your nut usually drops, but here we're raising it to the nut being... <laughs> Has to be directly above the fret in order to ring true. So not back here where your finger is, but right where the actual fret is. Okay? So practice on the 12th fret with this finger behind it, not pushing down on the finger. It's there just to stop the residual ringing from behind the slide, like I pointed out earlier. This. That noise. You put that finger back here, it damps it. Is what it's called. It's just like a piano damper pedal. You push it and everything shuts up except for the notes you hit they play, but they don't continue to ring. It just kind of shuts up all the residual stuff. You need one for a wife now and then, don't you? <laughs> um, or, or anybody, a brother, a sister, anything that you have that's driving you nuts. A damper pedal would be a good thing, or at least a noise gate. Okay, so let's practice on the D, G, and B string. Just... Okay. Not even using much vibrato yet, if you want to. I don't care if you let them ring or not at this point um, against each other. So you can play one, play the next, play the next, or play them all together. But you got to develop a nice, even um, vibrato not tremolo. A tremolo is an effect. Um, a lot of people don't know the difference between vibrato and tremolo. Okay, this is tremolo. That is an effect. This is vibrato. Okay, that's something you create manually. Um, I'll leave that one alone too. Okay, um, another great thing about this is as you're doing this, as you just heard, you get a lot of that great stuff that you'll hear from George Thorogood or from anybody who plays a slide, but who really likes to slop it up. 
and that sloppiness is cool. It's cool to hear that slide doing that. You'll, you know, remember Hendrix, of course, just for creating the vibrato, getting ready, you know, doing that thing. But same thing here. Okay, and of course with thorough good. And later on it. You know, you get just these wild elephant sounds. Okay, and they're great. And it's just from going crazy and nuts and doing all that. Now if you ever hear this like I'm kinda doing here on the slide on the side of your neck, that's either you're playing on the side of your neck and that's rubbing up against the frets or you're pushing down too hard which I I can hardly do it I can make it there I'm trying to push down hard enough to make it hit the fret so don't push down on your slide your slide should weigh enough if you have a real lightweight plastic or glass slide then you might have to put a little pressure on it but if you use a great one like this Dunlop $4.99 metal slide is plenty heavy to do the work Metal against metal sounds great. Experiment with different alloys if you want. It's it's all about what works for you, not for me. I'm here to show you the notes. Okay, so now that we're like 11 minutes into this thing, let's learn some stuff. Okay, what we're going to do here is simply go from the 12th fret back to the 11th, back up to the 12th. D string, G string, then B string. Okay, we're not letting them ring. We're doing them this way. Then end back up on the G string at the 12th fret. So D string, 12, 11, 12. G string, same thing. B string, same thing. Then the 12th fret. And let it ring with the B string. You can do it however you want. This is a guideline, not a rule. But it lets you hear the chord. Okay, so that is your G chord. Now, um, the great feature about using the your YouTube um, taskbar down at the bottom is to you can pause and rewind. So please do that because I'm going to kind of start flying from here on out. Okay, we've got the basic BS out of the way. Let's get to what makes it cool. Okay, so do that until you're getting comfortable with vibratos and slide. Otherwise, come back tomorrow and work on it, even if it took you 12 hours to get that much under your belt. And mess around with doing all that noise too. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do, um, I want you to actually go on the B string at the 10th fret from 10 to 12 and while it's still ringing by the time when you hit the 12th fret then also add in the G string okay and then get creative with it just playing with those two notes the D string too. Okay, that is one section. Pause, rewind, whatever. Here comes your next selection. Same thing. I know that's the note you're looking for, the seventh. That is simply doing the same thing, 10 to 12 on the B string. I'm just hitting the D string now at the 12th, then the G string at the 12th, sliding the G string only, you have to mute everything else but the G string here because we cannot let these other strings be flattened by two frets. So we're going from 12 down to 10 on the G string. Again, 10 to 12 on the B, you can hit the G string, 
then the D string if you want. Slide from 10 back up to 12 on the G string. Or on your way back up. Pick up some friends along the way. That's right, the other two strings. Okay, so with what you have now, you can do a bunch of things, but I'm going to add in one more before I ask you to do a bunch of things and before we introduce the Casio keyboard in all of its sonic glory into the mix. We're also going to add in the high E string now. Um, we can only add it in one place, and that is going to be at the 10th fret. Okay? And then we also remember, you did the 10th fret on the B string. So E string, 10th fret. So you need to do the high E string, 10th fret. Here's, the, here's how it's going to be phrased. So they are quick, they are staccato, which means chopped off. So, okay, 10th fret, E string, 10th fret, B string, up to the 12th. And you can have the G string at the 12th also. Um, blend it in with the B string, doesn't matter, your choice. Or, or you can blend it backward and... What was that? Just going from 10 to 12 on the B string. We're just doing it twice. So I did 10 on the E, 10 on the B, up to 12, then 12 on the G, went down to the 10 on the G, which is 10 to 12, 10 to 12 on the B, 12 on G with a lot of vibrato. And that's what's cool about the G string and being in G. You can always go and you're back to G again. Again, that is vibrato, not tremolo. That is tremolo. Okay, vibrato. Okay, whole different thing. Okay, so I'm going to stick on just the nasty Casio, show you those little notes in action. Oh, isn't it amazing? Sonic goodness. Okay, but using those... So mess around with that stuff that is just total improv I'm just playing whatever I feel that's the way the blues are okay and even if it's rock it don't matter just play what you feel that's the secret right there okay don't play other people's stuff <laughs> sure it's fine when you're learning Mary had a little lamb not the cool version um, but playing that. That's the only coverage you should be doing. Everything else, play your own stuff. <laughs> You're not going to get rich playing other people's music. Uh, you'll be in a bar band the rest of your life. Okay, more with this position. That's what she said. Okay, let's take it all the way up to the other notes that are allowed to be played. Okay, these are going to be um, same position, of course. And of course you put this in any position, if you're in E, you're here, if you're in D, you're here. But these are the rules. Okay, here's the scale with my fingers. Traditional scale. So D string, 12, 14. Same on the G. Now the B string changes because of the way it's tuned. It's going to be 12, 13, 15. 
Now, the E string can be a few ways, but you've only got a few notes to work with here. So, of course, 12 and 15. If you end up at G again on 15. Okay, you're probably, since you're already going back two frets and hitting your 7th on your 12th fret of your G string, you probably want to do the same thing on your high E string. Okay, so again, D string, 12, 14. G string, 12, 14. B string, 12, 13, 15. E string, 12, 13, 15. And backward. To finish it up, you would actually go to the A string, 12th fret. And back two frets to your G. Okay, so you have all the way. You can go up also two frets. So 12, 14, just like you were doing on all the others. 12, 14, 12, 14, 12, 14, but on the A string too. But you must start on the 10 in order to get a G on the A string. Okay. From there, I know it's a lot to absorb, but 15, 17, 19, so just follow the dots on G on the high E. Then you can go up to 20. So 15, 17, 19, 20. Then I'll talk about a different chord shape in a little bit, and we'll start tying the whole guitar neck together with three different chord shapes. Okay, again, Starting from the G on the A string at the 10th fret. 12, 14, D string 12, 14, G string 12, G string 14, B string 12, 13, 15, E string 12, 13, 15, 17, 19, 20. And even though you're in G here, you can, a D is part of the G, so you can go all the way up here to 22. Now I'm getting ahead of myself, but those are the notes you can hit. Okay, so what we're going to do here now is... up some more uh, riders here on the bus. Okay, so we already had the 10 on the E string, 10 on the B string, up to 12 and then hit the G, then 12 on the G, 12 on the B, 13, 15, and then add in the 15 on the G. going 12, I'm sorry, 14, 15. Same thing you've heard before. Now just 10 to 12 on the B. Pick up the G string. So you can see where this is going to get fun. Now I'm just going to go 14 or 12, 14, 12, 14 on the uh, D and G. Back to the 12, so I'm ending on the G. This is just show you when it gets slower and bluesier. Okay, that's the same note, the B note, which would have been the uh, 16th fret. Same note as the 12th fret on the B string. But it allows for just some more sliding. So slide, these are the notes you can use, but take it upon yourself 
to learn some by experimenting. That's where you actually learn more than me showing you. Okay, so instead of going there on the B string, go. So you have a nice even slide. That's why you have a slide. It removes the frets, theor theoretically, from your guitar. What was that? The notes I showed you. We're just playing them in a different place. So you figure those out. I already showed you. 12, 14, 16, 17, 19. 17, 16, 14, 12. There, I told you. I took the mystery away. Dang it, I didn't want to do that. Okay. So the... Okay, I'll add that one too. But remember, these are just doing going from the 14 to the 15 on the E and B. Doing the B string first. to the other G and D notes. So we had a G and a D note. And you can take it all the way down here too. You know, do the low E and the A string, but where is it? Okay, so whatever works for you. Okay, now um, since time is flying by, um, Let's add in some more stuff, but you work with all these notes that I showed you that do work. I'm using a volume pedal. So if you like that sound, either get used to using your finger on a volume knob, or simply grab a volume pedal which is much more accurate. Okay, so you'll get into the um, Jackson Brown if you're that old um, and you check out some of the slide work that was done there, usually done on a lap steel, but um, still very much the same effect with the volume pedal. Okay, now what I also want to show you, um, we'll get to our next shape now. And this is going to be a very easy one. This is the D shape, okay? So you'll remember that A shape, even though no matter where you put it, it's just, and you have those three chords, or three notes to work on, basically. And then I showed you all the other places to go in that shape really quickly. The next shape is the D shape. Uh, shape of the dog, D. Uh, us country folks, we talk like it. Uh, we tell people when we're getting ready to go from, you know, G God. You know, that's why we yell it out across the stage because everything sounds like E, E, E across the stage. G, B, C, D, E, G. You know, it's like they all look the same too if you're trying to tell your bandmate across the stage what it is. So you go, G God, or D Dog, or you just say Dog, and they go to Dog instead of E, B, C, D, G, because they all sound the same and they look the same if you're trying to mouth it to them, okay? Um, never mouth your bandmate unless she's hot. Okay, so the D shape. Okay, since we have a slide in our hand, something's always going to mess up trying to learn how to play a chord correctly without that. So I just do it by barring a finger across your E, B, and G string, and then putting my ring finger, since I have it free, you may have a different finger free, play the D chord. <laughs> But no, we're playing in the key of G, so we got to move it up. So now we're at the seventh fret on the D. I'm sorry, on the G, B, and E string. Add our 
whatever finger you have left over on the 8th fret and then you have a G chord but it looks like a D so so if you're able to do the old uh, bugle call there thing and start the races you are playing the right chord now play those three notes Okay, and know that you're playing a G. Okay, so now you can already incorporate those three notes and with what you've already done. Okay, now we just have to figure out, okay, what can we do with these three notes to embellish it all? Well, that's why I'm here. Okay, so from that position, on the G string, we're already at seven. Okay, just remember this shape in your head. Don't leave it there because you're you cannot make that chord now um, with your slide bar. You can do the G string and the high E string which you will want to do very much so just don't hit the B string okay because that's going to help you get the that's called a little cross slide okay that's going to help you get your other notes but okay and well you can see how it's happening but no B string was included and no animals were harmed in the making of this film okay um, no American telecasters were harmed in this film either okay so the other notes here are going to be very simple to remember Okay, so you're at seven on the G. You can add nine. Now you go to the B string. You're at eight. You can add 10. So, so far we're just adding two frets above. So seven, nine, then eight and 10 on the B. Then the E string's different. You're at seven, eight, and 10. Okay, you see where I'm going. Okay, so seven and nine on the G. Eight and ten on the B. Now seven, eight, and ten on the E. Okay, now once you get there, I'm all about tying these things together once you get somewhere. Once you get to that tenth fret on your E string, That puts you in the position to hit that 10th fret, then the 10th fret on the B string, up to the 12th, and then hit the G string of the 12th. Okay, so you had... See how that slipped in? Again, G string 7-9. 8, 10 on the B, 7, 8, 10 on the E. Phenomenal. Okay, so now you have that. Okay. And now that you're already there on your G string from 7 to 9, another place to tie you in is when you get on the B string. Um, you have the 8 to 10. Just go right to that 12th fret where we began everything and start working there again because you're already there. So you just worked yourself backward too from that 12th fret. Back to open. That was my thing hitting a locking nut. You gotta hate it when the rod hits the nut. Okay, so there you go. That'll help you too. 
while you're already there on the seventh fret, go ahead and hit the D string, seventh fret. Same thing we did on the A string a while back from the tenth to the eighth. Um, we're going to be doing the D string from where we left off on the G string to the A. I'm sorry, to the D string on the seventh. Back two frets, and that gives you a fifth fret, which is your G. Okay, so. to seven back to five on your A string now here's a cool one um, it's minor but it's a blues scale um, that's going um, six five three on your low E string okay so that ends it up so you're at five on your D string now five seven five on your A now I'm just going to go six, five, three. You know, but that ends you all the way down at the bottom of your guitar. So now you can take it from one end of the guitar way all the way up to the other end. Okay, see how that ties together? Okay, so that is your D shape and things you can do with it. And of course, um, your major root note which is that 8th fret, your G note on your B string, 8th fret. You can take it backwards, 2 frets. You might get used to doing that. Thumb, finger, G string, E string. Seventh fret on the G string and E string. This is going to be the hardest stretch for you to do on a slide bar, but just to show you what's happening there, it's going to the fourth fret on your G string. And then you have to cross bar it, is what it's called. So you really got to turn that sucker sideways and literally cover the fourth fret on the G string and then the third fret on the E string. So. Okay, what people do here is go to the third fret, hit the third fret on the G string. Turn it, and then when they do turn it, that E string stays there. It's like a pivot, okay, which means it rotates on an axis, the axis being the third fret on your high E string. Okay, so. It's not an easy one to do well. Do it an octave higher, it is so much easier. Okay, now we have this. Um, when slide players sometimes play open stringed instrument or open tuning instruments, they like to do a lot of that crossbar thing. Uh, but without having to do the crossbar, they simply tune their high E string down to D. Okay, you don't want to do that at this particular juncture. Not for this lesson, anyway. You can do it all you want on your own. And then some of these rules will never apply again because you're in the wrong tuning for this lesson. Not the wrong tuning of a slide because there are as many open tunings for slide as there are notes on your guitar, period. Okay, and octaves. Okay, the other cool trick, what I just showed you, but to get that sound, is um, there's that same type of sound we just did, but it's... Okay, what, it, what this is... Are the, okay, 
Okay, that's what you've been waiting 40 minutes to hear. <laughs> show you one other shape real quick too. But that one, I know I've taught this a few times on a few different slide videos, but I'm in a mellower mood today and I'm not yelling at people. <laughs> it's it's hard, man. You have, you know, health issues and you have other issues. Um, some days you're good, some days you're bad. And um, regardless, I'm just here to try to help. Good days or bad, I turn on the camera. You have to suffer or not suffer, depending on if you just hit stop or wait for me to do a new, new video. Okay, so to get that sound that is normally associated with having your high E string tuned down to a D, you would normally get that just going to the 15th fret and hitting your B and E string together, but since your E string is too normal, you get this sound. Which is great to have, but you cannot get that when you detune. Okay, but at least this way, in normal tuning, you can get both. So I find being in standard tuning much more practical because you can not have to retune, not have to grab another guitar, and you can play everything else without having to retune your guitar. There are ways to get around the whole slide thing and make all these things that are um, associated with open tunings. Okay, so for that sound that is normally this... <coughs> which you normally could do on your B and E string but since we're tuned like this we have to do it another way we have to go make a G7 which means we have to go all the way up to the 17th I'm sorry 8, 19th fret on the G that's your D note then we have to do the 7th of the G the G is actually at the 20th fret on the B string but we got to go backward to the 18th fret. So we got to cover um, 20. I'm sorry, I'm keep screwing these up. It's my bad. Anyway, 19 on the G and 18 on the B. So 19 and 18, and that's just done with a slight bar bend. You'll you'll see it. do it with your finger or your pick it makes no difference and you can do what's called chromatically which means one half step at a time or one fret at a time okay so you're doing it from let me count to make sure 19 and 18 to 17 uh, to 18 and 17 then down one more fret we finally end up on 16 and 15. Just those two strings. And that puts you back in G major again. Just those four. So you're in G7. Now you're in G major. Instead of just G major 7. Okay. A lot of people like to play that 7 and then come back to the 12th fret with the 8th position. That is most normally used. My bad. Doing that 10th fret on the B string. After the 12th, adding the G string. can see how that's done. Okay, so that's a really cool one. Um, so that is what you could get if you were to detune, de 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 that's all folks, <laughs> to detune your guitar. But why do it when you can just do the little crossbar slant? Now you can still... what we did before but just backward from way down here when we did the seven but doing the 
G string and the E string. That's just going back up the other way. I'm just. Then adding the high G way up here at the God knows what 20th fret. Okay? And I just did a G7, so I went back from the 20th to the 18th on the B string. Okay, one more um, shape. Okay, an easy one. This is the F shape, F chord shape. Okay, this is basically giving you most of my um, my first slide guitar video is what's happening, um, which is fine with me. You know, people who will get them for free, people will pay for them. It all is fine. It really doesn't matter. I'm just glad that um, you guys will take on the big legacy that's mine, whatever my legacy is. I just love to teach people. I want to pass the torch. It's Olympic time right now. The uh, Olympics are going on over in London uh, as we speak. Um, so this will show you how old this video is. Uh, Michael Phelps ain't doing great, but hey, um, you hit the bong, you get it wrong. <laughs> okay, so the F chord Take it, move it up two frets, so now you have G, okay? Think of that chord. Don't play that chord. You can make sure it's all there, all four notes. Fifth fret D, fourth fret B, I'm sorry, fourth fret G, third fret on your B and E. Play all four on your slide. a good little tune to try to work out on slide just to try to get used to the F shape and what all you can do and where you can go so work that out on your own because you learn a lot more that way but those are your notes and of course you can go from we're at three on the high E string up to five up to seven that's where you're already back into someplace familiar you know, you can do the 7 on that E string and on the G string. But now when you do that bend, you're already doing two of, the, two of the notes on that F chord. Or that F shape, I should say. Okay, this F shape will come in much more handy an octave higher. So 15, 15, 16, 17. Now that's where I wanted to show you, this is from earlier of course, but when we're doing that thing where we're sliding from the 14th to the 15th, those other two notes are simply finishing out the F chord. So you're up here at 15 and 15 and you're working your way into them with the slide. Now I'm just sliding from 15 to the 16th fret on the G string. Now from the uh, 16th to the 17th fret on the D string. So that gives me my full F chord, F shape chord. And that also allows you just a way to play more stuff there because you are slide up to that 16th fret on that G string and then slide up to the 17th fret to finish up your F shape on the D string and then go three frets higher that's the blue scale which it just gives you a minor third and then go backward two frets back to the 15th fret that gives you your seventh okay doing there but just in a different place okay so if you're playing again F shape
you already know these notes uh, 15, 17, 19, just follow the dots then you gotta get off the dots for the next two okay okay now on your way up here you can do the D if you have a guitar with 24 frets um, you can do the D shape thing again way up here Okay. Even if you don't, you can work them out if you have a strat with 21 or 22. You know where the frets roughly are. And your slide makes it a fretless guitar. So you can slide up there. The frets don't have to be there. You can keep coming on up. You know, you can have 80 frets if you go to the bridge position. You know, you can have more frets than anybody. Plus you get to do the cool laugh thing. Okay, yeah, old cartoon things. But that is basically the lesson. It is simple, but it is a matter of more than anything getting used to having the slide bar on, getting used to having that damper finger not glued to it. You can see how far away I have it. Whatever works for you, but don't push down on anything, okay? Nothing. Don't push on anything. <laughs> really with the um, Star Spangled Banner try to sound out the notes I mean it's all on that F chord See? I have a video on it you can look on my channel just put Scott Grove Star Spangled Banner just star and you'll get two things me on Star Search and then Star Spangled Banner that's it. <laughs> yes, I was on the Gay Star Search show. So if you want to see that, just put in Scott Grove and Star and you'll see the Star Search video. Um, such lovely hair I had then too. Not like today's style is any better. But those are all the different things and those will seamlessly put the entire neck together for you. And of course we did everything today. I'll get back on my pretty face. Um, we did everything today in the key of G. Uh, get my finger out of there. Uh. <laughs> An hour in the old boiler room there for the old finger. Okay, so um, work on it in every key. Grab your backup, you know, backing tracks. You've all got them. If you don't have them, ask me. Um, I'll give you the ones the Guitar Center hands out for their. Um, blues guitar players shoot out every year you know so they're not mine I don't make these things um, but they are free um, I don't know if they're free for me to dis distribute but I can't imagine why they're um, royalty free public domain songs so I'll be happy to just send you those because they're not mine so and they're on uh, Guitar Center's website to download anyway, so you can get them there again from me and work with your slide and every key But use those three chord shapes for now and work on all the other chord shapes and see if they lend themselves um, And they do um, Every chord shape lends itself. You just imagine the chords as you're playing and all of a sudden they just keep running into each other You have an F chord you have the D you know the F shape, you have the D shape, you have the A shape. By the time you start playing the top end of each shape, all of a sudden you're into the next shape. And then you know where to go from there. And of course as you get higher and the notes get closer, the frets get closer together, um, everything's really close once you get to the top end of playing out your shapes. So um, work on your E shapes, which is duh, 
exactly the same as your F shape. It just has a bar on it, you know, or <laughs> without the bar, uh, meaning a bar chord. So a bar chord is no different than the F shape. So if you want me to save you a lot of time, don't work on the E chord. So why did I mention it? I don't know. So let's go E, F, G shape. Um, I wouldn't mess with it. A, of course, it's already there. B, don't need it because it's going to be the A shape. It's moved up two frets. C shape. Um, there's some usefulness there. Maybe mess around with that a little bit. D shape we did. And then you're back to E. So those are basically the, the shapes to use. Then you might, like I said, you might screw around with the C shape a little bit, but it's nothing that one of these other three can't handle. And then with all this information, you should be just fine and dandy on your own. And like I said, the biggest part is just getting over um, if you've never played slide before, it's just holding it and not pushing down, okay, and not raising your action, and not putting heavier strings on. Heavier strings do not sound any different than lighter strings. There's no difference in tone, unless it's on an acoustic guitar, then there's a slight difference. But uh, unless you get stupidly light, you know, like eight gauge, eight gauge strings on an acoustic, then you're just... Um, not brilliant, but I'm playing nine gauge strings on every guitar, and again, my action uh, a two year old could play these guitars, so you don't need to raise your action in order to play slide guitar. So, whoever's telling you that malarkey that's an old folks' term for BS um, couldn't be further from the truth. So, work with it. If you feel you have to raise your action, you are going to go out of tune when you play regular guitar because you have to push harder that will force all your notes to go sharp so please do not raise your action because it just causes unneeded um, tuning problems okay so once again Scott Grove uh, just cowboying out and doing my I would say Texas blues but um, it's just slide guitar apply it to anything you want turn off the distortion or turn on some distortion instead of overdrive rock out do the overdrive do the blues thing or go clean play country with it it's very nice uh, use the volume pedal as volume pedal swells and do steel guitar emulation type of things it's very useful for that too a lot of guitar players do um, the pedal steel things you know that I teach but they never actually use the slide bar to play it and that is a very nice uh, sound is when you actually use a slide bar to try to sound like a pedal steel. There are a lot of cool licks to be done that way. So experiment and experiment and experiment. That's what college is for, ladies. <laughs> Did I say that? Can I give this out for free? Uh, I'll put it on the free thing. Um, so it'll be on the website. There's always a link right below here. You can go have hours and hours and hours and hours of free lessons just click the link below here it'll let you go look at all my guitars all my guitar reviews and the first thing is always the link to my free lessons not a dime you know it asks for a charity thing there but you don't have to pay a cent i'm not begging for nothing so go there everything that is a free lesson um that i'm not cussing like crazy on <laughs> is on there so just go there and they're all right there you don't have to wonder if i have that lesson for free because they're all on one page Okay, once again, y'all take care and happy sliding.